Yo, what's up? This is Splendid Radio on Farside TV. Um, my co-host Jeremy Scipio is hitting the stage tonight, but uh, I'm blessed to have uh, Pep Love and the OG homeboy Justin Gay, you know, here to have a great conversation about some hip hop and some uh, uh, keeping your body right, health, you know what I'm saying? You need to do something for the body with these stressful times we got going. So uh, we're going to start off with the interview with Pep. Pep Love. Homeboy, he was a a friendship that I inherited through the far side. And uh, man, dope MC, <laughs> dope MC. I'm a fan. Like I, I could, I, I could, I could say that. Like man, like, like yeah, a, a, a definite fan. So basically, um, when was the first time you heard hip hop, and what was the song? <laughs> Damn. That is a that goes back, huh? Um, I think I was like six or seven years old. I heard my first rap song, and um, I might even have been younger than that, like five, maybe five or six, six, maybe six, yeah. And I think that it was um, Planet Rock. Okay. Yeah, Planet Rock was the first. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was Planet Rock. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was it was playing a rock. That was the first time I ever heard. That was the first time I ever heard rap. And and funny thing is, I, somebody asked me this question before. Um, you know, hip hop is a is a very opinionated. Hip hop fans are very opinionated. And uh, dude asked me what what the first hip hop song I listened to or that I heard, and I said Planet Rock, and he was like Planet Rock. He was like, that's not hip hop. <laughs> like what? <laughs> <laughs> planet rock is not hip-hop okay he's like that's, oh, that's he's like that's electronic dance music or whatever that's edm i'm like really that's edm okay you know what i guess, I, I guess edm is hip-hop they would never they would never say that you know what it is i think the further people are like the younger people are i guess like like the the newer hip-hop is to them their interpretation doesn't understand kind of like the root of it and then how it kind of went out. Example, um, when uh, I ended up uh, getting to know uh, Mick Jones from The Clash a little bit, uh, dealing with the gorillas, and he was breaking down how the, the Clash popped their situation off. And he was like, man, Russell Simmons helped him get it cracking out here. You know what I'm saying? And I was just kind of like, damn, I was, you, you, you wouldn't think that, you know what I'm saying? But he was like, you know, wow. we, came, we came out here from London. We had our thing going on out there. We came to New York and kind of the culture in New York at the time was like all the dope people got together. It, but it, it, I guess it is similar now. It's just outside of my circle of peers and whatnot. But it's kind of like <clears throat> all the people that are at certain levels of their game, like the artists, the musicians, the actors, like all that they kind of like linked up and they clicked up and that was like kind of a community, you know, so to speak. So uh -huh. he said that um, uh, Russell Sims, Russell Simmons did a tour and it was, uh, oh, we lost him for a second, but he'll be back. Hold, hold, on, hold on a second. There's somebody trying to get in. Hold on. Hold on. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying, man? I'm from Mississippi. My folks are from Mississippi, man. We smoke meat and tell stories. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, man. <laughs> Guess what's going? Is that where you you not you you originally from Mississippi, Greg? Nah, my parents. Brooklyn. Okay. Right. Yeah. Houston and Mississippi. I think he talked about that. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, um, I had to take that because of somebody's uh, trying to come up, trying to get in. Oh, no, it's all good. But, so, um, where were we at? Oh, yeah, yeah. You were still talking about uh, how yeah. people's different interpretations of what hip hop is, right? And you were telling me how Russell Simmons um, helped to help to hook the clash up with, with, uh, with their deal, right? Well, no, not their deal, but he put them on a tour. You know what I'm saying? So they were out with like Run DMC, LL Cool J, and the, I want to say the Beastie Boys. You know what I'm saying? But I, but I say that to say, 
we've seen Crush Groove. We've seen the the movie. We've been we've been exposed to the culture of just like Blondie kicking it with the rappers and all that kind of stuff, and like all that, like like everybody who was kind of dope or an elitist at their level, they kind of you know they they were aware of each other. Where Homeboy, oh, yeah. who you're talking to, where Planet Rock seems so foreign, it was probably like, you know what I'm saying? He's probably like, man, it wasn't hip hop to him, or any, you know what I'm saying? I wonder, you know, sometimes, I, just like I said, hip hoppers are ornery, opinionated. And I mean, he's old enough to where he knows Planet Rock. He heard the song when he was a kid, too. <laughs> he just then changed his, you know. He, people kind of get on their shit. You know, the West Coast kind of came up and started having our, our own sound out here. And so I think, you know, since this guy was from the Bay and from the West Coast, he's like, you know, we we do it different. Or we, I, you know, I can't, let me, I can't read his mind. I don't know what the hell he's yeah. doing. <laughs> the what? Planet Rock is definitely, that's Africa Bambata and the Soul Sonic Force, Zulu Nation. I mean, come on now. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm trying to make an excuse for him. You're trying to make an excuse for him. There is no excuse. It just kind of is what it was. Yeah, I mean, the sound definitely has changed. The imagery has changed. Them niggas used to wear leather pants and, you know, the rabbit's foot's hanging off their, their, their side. Shit. That was a different vibe. You know, it was, a different, it was a different time. I guarantee you if somebody came out now looking like how those cats did with the great, you know, <laughs> People would be like, what is that? You know, if it was brand new, if the youngsters from now saw that for the first time, they'd be like, what is what what is this? What's you know, they'd be like, what is this new genre of music? Uh, they gravitate to it, man. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> they would gravitate to it. Probably that'd be the new thing. They'd be like, I want that's I want his drip. I want yeah. them leather pants. <laughs> I want that headband the dude is wearing. So yeah. how did you so how did you become a member of High Roll? Um, just because we were like uh, some of the few uh, kids our age that were rapping, that were doing music, that were trying to actually write, make our own songs, and we all were same around the same age. We 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 from the we all are from um, the Bay Area. You know, I wasn't I didn't live in Oakland, so I met the, I met everybody a little bit later, but it was still in high school. Um, I, I met everybody, I think, in my junior year. They all kind of grew. Most of them, most of the rest of the crew, um, other than like me and Dom, me and Domino are from different are not from Oakland. And okay. the rest, the rest of the crew are from Oakland. They're from they're from East Oakland. So um, I met. I think I met A plus first and um, cause he was hanging out with another friend of my, uh, another friend of mine that was doing music and rapping and, and, and stuff. A plus was kind of more like a, he was kind of more like a street kid that was, that you could see in any given place. He was from East Oakland, but you would see him on Telegraph in Berkeley. Um, I think I met him for the first time at a, at a BDP concert at, um, at uh, the Little Theater in, at, at Berkeley High. Everybody who, who's, who's from the Bay, who's from uh, even Oakland, back then in the early 90s remembers that they used to do, they used to put on a lot of shows at uh, Berkeley High's Little Theater. It was kind of like a separate thing when they did nighttime events. It wasn't like even connected to the high school. That was just like a venue uh, mm. almost, but it was all ages shows. And so, I, you know, I, I met a lot of kids um there not necessarily to actually I, I i met a plus there but it was just like yo what's up we gave each other a pound we was like on same age similar vibe and we didn't i didn't get to know him though until i met him uh, until i uh encountered him again over at a mutual friend's house and uh the homie um cmpx was there he's one of the early high road members he's one of dell's uh one of Dell's close friends that they started doing music around the same time. And um, he, he used to be around a lot more back then. And so they were all rhyming. They had make, you know, um, was it, yeah, I think it was CMPX was making beats on the table. And um, it was me, Jay Biz, uh, my boy, um, they, they, we called him, the, he was, his name was the dark one. His name is Kev, Kevin Singleton. Um, my boy, Chris, extra large, the, the, the barber. 
Um, <laughs> we we all used to kick it and drink and smoke and just you know Chris used to sell weed too, so we we, all, we always had a ton of trees and we just be over there smoking and when, and when anybody had a new rhyme, um, this is really kind of like right as I was getting into freestyling going off the top of the head, but it was like a, about having like a written rhyme to spit. And everybody had like dope rhymes. I had a verse, I, you know, they had, I heard A plus rap. I didn't think nobody else could rap really. I didn't think that there was anybody else in the Bay Area or in Oakland that was like lyrical. Everything was gangster rap and too short and pimp shit and not that kind of, <laughs> that kind of vibe, which I mean, truth be told, we were all too young. Anybody that was 16 years old trying to pretend like, unless you was out in the streets, mm. if you like 15, 16 years old and you actually trying to act like you know what is really going on with what, you know, Too Short is talking about, what Pooh Man and all of these, you know, Oakland street legends were on. It was not really what, like, we, Cass was pretending to really be up on, on that kind of game. I'm not from there. I never felt the need to pretend. I was like being a dope rapper and a lyricist and thinking about this and being into my, my creativity that's enough to make me be a special standout type individual. And um, like I said, there were few others that were actually seriously doing it. And this definitely wasn't that many, there were, there's hardly anybody else that was like lyrical, that was like different than the Bay Area gangster street mob shit mentality rap that was prominent. And, you know, mm -hmm. at the time it's continued to be prominent, you know, for, for, for a long time after we were kind of the we were the exception and when i met um some of the other cats like i said i ran down a list of names not all of it, uh, are names that you would recognize from being members of hyrule but we were all down at the same time and we were all young um you know i maybe have been a little bit younger and, and me and a plus were the same age so there was the other cats who were a little bit older than us but we were all around the same age and um from there i think i met casual uh and Opio on like a group phone call and we all was like rhyming on you remember when, when Cash used to be like have a three-way and then they'd call one homie and then the other homie would call another homie and next thing you know you got like four or five people on the phone. Yeah. So we had, I remember we had, that, but we never did nothing cool like I never did nothing cool like that. <laughs> we had the phone cipher. Yeah, we had the phone cipher. Kick a rhyme. I want to hear you rhyme. I want to hear you rap. Yeah, I heard he kicked that rap back, kick that one rap that you kicked when we when I first met you, that kind of shit. And so we on the phone. And then eventually I met Casual at uh, a summer school at, at Laney College. And it just was a chance meeting. And, um, you know, from there, you know, other shit happened. And somehow I ended up going to the same high school with, with uh, the rest of the cast. I went to Skyline High for my senior year of high school. And, um, yeah, I think our, our relationship flourished. I got a chance to see how they were, like, making songs um dell owned the four track and he would like let cats borrow it so they could make their songs i think the four track was over at at um cash's house for a bit and then it was over at a plus's house for a bit dell was out of town i think he was down here in la working with um cube for i think they were working on a yo-yo's album or they was working on they were they were working on somebody else's album or maybe he was working on actually he might have been doing some work with with some of the other lynch mob artists but he was finishing off his album his album was probably done actually and he was just down here doing some other stuff because i remember hearing songs and then not long after that i heard that they went and shot a video for um sleeping on my couch and this is kind of like the relationship was organically becoming you know we in high school we still in kids so we, you know we got to go back home to our parents house and do homework and all that kind of stuff. At least some of us did. I don't know about everybody. But. Quick, quick question. So, did you uh, understand like who? Did you understand who Ice Cube was at the time that Dale was like that was Dale's yeah. people, and he was going okay. I mean, yeah, but I mean, the gravity that, that that Dale was related to him, I'm not sure. Yeah. No, I'm, but I'm, I'm saying, did you understand the gravity of the MC that he was? Like, okay, NWA. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, yeah, okay. of course. Yeah, he was famous. He was he was famous already back then. That was ninety, that was ninety one, ninety two. Cube was already famous. The the, on, the only reason I ask, one of the things I learned, you know, just 
through conversations with the far side earlier in their career was that there was a such thing as regional music. And so I always ask people like, what was popping where you're from? Cause just, cause when you're in LA and you never leave LA, like for me, Ice Cube was it, you know what I'm saying? NWA was it. But as an adult, I learned, man, what's cracking in LA on the radio right now, you could just go somewhere else, man. And they, it, it just, you know, yeah. it, it just doesn't mean anything. So no, that's, that's why I asked that. Yeah, it was, it was definitely um, more regional, but yeah, I mean, I, my perspective was more hip hop in general. Like I said, I wasn't from there. I came to the Bay Area and to California when I was 12, 13 years old. So I was already, you know, like I, I knew what I liked and what I was into it was an explosion because I came from the South. I was, I was from Mississippi. And so it was an explosion of exposure to rap. Like when, when I left Mississippi, we didn't even have no like record stores where you could go cop a hip hop record like that. And then all of a sudden I could catch the bus to Leopold's on Telegraph and go look to see what new record came out. It was like, it went from, it went, I went from the dark ages of not even really to, of having very limited access to rap music. And it probably changed, you know, that was 88, 89. So I think it changed a lot down in, Missis in Mississippi too, that same year. I just so happened to move to California that year. And um, so for me, it was like an explosion of exposure to hip hop and the street culture, you know, that I didn't, that I had never seen before. Graffiti art on the, on, on the walls and shit. You never saw that in, um, in Mississippi when I was, when I was there and when, before I moved. Cool. I'm going to flip around a little bit. Uh, I got this one for Justin, and then I'm going to hit you with it, uh, Pep. So um, over the summer, uh, one of my homeboys, somebody had kind of ran game on him on, on, on the Internet, though. You know what I'm saying? But it wasn't like something that was basic. It was kind of like it was like a sophisticated hustle type of thing. You know what I'm saying? And it was just kind of like, damn. So long story short we came up with a part of the uh, of the podcast where I asked people um, about getting monkey hustle. And so I, I call it the monkey hustle. So a monkey hustle is either somebody ran hell of a game on you or you witnessed somebody getting game ran on them. So I'll, I'll give you an example. So my situation said a million times, but basically I bought like three $200 bricks that was supposed to be camcorders from a Wendy's back in, shoot, 89, 90. You know what I'm saying? Where it was just like, and the dudes was like, oh man, we just got them off the train. Don't open it up right now. Get to where you're going. I think we might've been followed. Somebody threw them off the train. We called them. Woo, 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 woo. So for you, Justin, what is the, what is a monkey hustle that went down with you or what's something that you witnessed that you were just like, damn. Man, it's actually oh, that's a good question. That's cause me wild the blue, man. <laughs> probably trying to get some urban Louisiana one time, man. That's probably the only time, man. Some cat rolled up. Uh, trying to get some herb, man. This dude gave me like some moss, man. It was like some moss in a balloon or something, man. I was like, come <laughs> on, man. And the cool part was like he uh he gave me his number. And so when you, he's like, you know, just call the number or something. Like, I can't remember how it went. So I ended up calling the number. It was like this, like, it sounded like his grandma or something picked up. Wow. <laughs> as soon as you asked for the name, it just, they just hung up on you, man. So I was like, oh, shit. So that was probably the, the, the first, I mean, the only one that really jumped into my head. But later on that day, though, I got some, I got some nice stuff. So it was cool. Oh man, I was, I, you know, that reminds me, I got another one. I totally forgot about it. You said that I was in Mississippi and I had went to, uh, oh yeah, Pep, my family's from Brookhaven. So, oh, okay. so, uh, I had, you know, I wanted to get out the house. So they was having this little, uh, something at like the Elks Lodge or some type of, some type of lodge type thing, but they had this blues guy singing. So to show you how OG it was, <laughs> homeboy came in with the police escort. But like it's a very small city, like really small city. So they probably had like maybe three or four policemen. So homeboy came on in with the, with the police escort and everything. So I was like, man, I want to get some herbs. So 
I was asking around and asking around and none of my cousins really knew. So I went to the bathroom and got with this guy and he gave it to me and it was twisted in a zigzag, but not like a zigzag to smoke, kind of like how you just, you know, twist it around the top. Okay. And when I opened it up, <laughs> it was like tobacco and some like, man, it was tobacco and something yeah, of green yeah. color, but it, it wasn't her, you know, yeah, and I was like, you know what, you deserve that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You, you out gotta here. let those ones go, man. Like sometimes, like when that one happened, it was just like whatever, man. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah, whatever, whatever it is. What's man. up? Uh, you got a monkey hustle, Pat? Or you been fortunate? No, I ain't been fortunate. <laughs> 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 I'm just trying to think which one. Yeah, I, I definitely had the 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 little herb um thing run on me in in, in New York, but I've gotten it way worse than that. Um what was this this was back in 2006 2007 it was before i was really hip to the internet scams and um i was trying to record my own music you know i'm you know it was just getting to a point back then it was just a weird time where it was like limbo i couldn't get no i didn't know it just wasn't nothing popping you know what wasn't, wasn't nothing popping we as our business was in a weird state of flux with 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 high row and i just really wanted to continue to work on music and i just didn't have i didn't have any gear and so i i got my dad to uh to help me um buy something and my wife my ex-wife at the time she was more she you know she was she's younger and she was just more on the internet than me so she found something on ebay for me and she was like you should get this i trusted her and she trusted she trusted whatever ebay posting this was but the person was like you have to send me the money offline through, and that's just sounded suspicious to me she was like send me a money order offline don't do it through ebay through it. this is the only way i do it and i was like that don't sound right and it, it it was like, what was it that 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 I saw that was a red flag? They sent the eBay. They sent a, a email that had all the eBay official logo on it and everything. It looked official, but when I looked at it, I'm like, wait a minute, I, you know, because I'm a, a word person, so I'm reading it. I'm like, what's up with these typos? Did this this why does it sound like whoever this is is not, or why is one reading this? Whoever wrote, whoever put this together, doesn't doesn't seem like they have their their syntax together. Like they don't, they're not writing in. They, they, they didn't type this out in correct English. There were some typos, and I was like, this just didn't look right. And she was like, well, it has the logo. And da, 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 da. I mean, I'm like, I don't know. I I just didn't know. And so we sent this this person nine hundred dollars and waited and waited. Didn't get another return email. And I'm like, oh, we just got got. And then she called her, she, she, we should have asked all this beforehand, but she uh, asked her stepfather, who is, you know, um, a business person. And he was very familiar with, with um, computer software and the capability of what people can do online. And he was like, yeah, anybody can just put together a, a bullshit email and throw a, a, a eBay logo on it and shit. Like, that's not, that doesn't mean that it's official. And it's like, they, eBay tells you, do not do business offline. <laughs> <laughs> and you did it anyway and so we got got yeah got, got, my dad got got my, my dad gave me the money to, to, to i just felt i felt horrible about that one because my dad gave me the money trying to support my dream and then it was just some scam and shit you know what uh i heard man i, I heard so when we first started the monkey hustle situation one of the guys who was kind of aware of my friend you know going through what he went through he told a story where like, man, they, uh, somebody hustled like a man out of his retirement. You know what I'm saying? And I was just like, oh, and then, uh, a, a dude that I know that, uh, own, he's the owner of black flies right now. Like his grandparents are black like, flies. I remember black flies. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Mo, they hustled his parents out of like their savings, man. That shit kind of hurt my heart, man. Like somebody, they're, oh, they're elderly. You know what I'm saying? Somebody called and I think it was something where, it might have been something like they said it was a friend of their nephew and their nephew was in jail and he needed money or something like that. Or, you know, it was just something just like really like over the line. And uh, they sent like, I know it was over like six, it was over $50,000. I know that. You know um, what I'm saying? 
I'm I heard about, I heard about one like that, and this one I would never fall for. I heard of one where somehow a dude is getting a phone call from somebody, and they're like, "Yo, you got." They they basically scared the dude into going and pulling money out and sending. He like you you they 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 tricked him into thinking that he was in trouble. They basically they 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 they, they, they kind of it was a fake blackmail. It was like, yo, if you don't go, if you, th this is happening, we got this on you or some shit like this. I can't remember the exact details, yeah. but this is somebody who a friend of mine actually knew. And they like, yeah. dude is a mess. He be getting too drunk sometimes and just like losing his bearings. But I think one of the things that happens when people um, got, got issues, you know, he made, he, he, I think he had a good job and whatever, whatever, but I think he just drank too much. Mm -hmm. And you wake up with a hangover over and over and over again. After a while, your nerves start to get frayed. And if you got frayed nerves, somebody can say something to you, make you believe that you're in trouble. Next thing you know, all this anxiety builds up. And they 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 heard that he was really falling for it. And they were like, we got we got it. And so they like, yeah, if you don't show up, if you don't send us a five thousand dollar money order and da 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 and send this money right now we gonna show i think it was like a, a blackmail like we have this video of you online or something and it, it turned out he ended up sending the money and he was talking to somebody the whole time but he didn't want to tell him what was going on i remember now he was talking to the person that person was like he was telling the person oh man they, they're trying to they, they're telling me if i, if I don't send them the money and da 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 this that and the third and the person was like finally after the dude sent or before, maybe it was before but the dude was like I got to send this money now. And they like, wait a minute. Did, did, did It was some kind of verification. Did you ask the person this? Did you ask them that? Yeah. And dude was like, nah. Huh. And he was like, oh, I just got like, God. <laughs> Man. And it was, it was like for like 10,000. It was like for a significant amount of money. You know, the funny thing though, I, I basically, I've been on something where, uh, I don't count none of my losses or what could appear to be a loss. Like I, I, I'm, I'm aware in the moment, but I count my wins. Cause you have, honestly, you have way more wins than you do losses, man. Totally. You know what I'm totally. saying? You, you really do, you know, and it takes a moment for you to get to that. Yeah. It's a you know stress what, anxiety thing. Like you manage your stress by not counting your losses. If you lose something, especially if you literally just drop something on, like you drop something on the ground and you're like, what, what happened to my, like that's happened to me enough times to where I know that I shouldn't fret about it, I should just let it go. But it's still a challenge. <laughs> I had, to, I had, to, I was just talking to my to my girl um, the other day about these Ray Bans that I had for like ten years almost. I got them in 2012, so I got had them like eight years. And just one day, you know, after having them for so long, one day I'm chilling with her. We go out to eat, whatever. I I take her to to drop her off at the airport, and then when I uh, I go home and chill, whatever wake up the next day and I'm like where the hell is my shades I'm like oh I left my shades at that damn restaurant they're gone I had them right there for, for eight years and sometimes I still like that picture that profile picture I'm wearing mm -hmm. those red Ray-Bans <laughs> and looking at it looking at that picture I'm like damn <laughs> let it go oh, they're gone I enjoyed them while I had them sentimental yes. value though but yeah, yeah you're right don't count your losses count oh your man losses. let it go let it go, man. And, 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 and my mom used to say, if you count your, count your blessings and they will multiply. Oh, man. I, I believe that. You know, my, my thing is this. You could fool around and worry about something you have no control over and screw up everything you do have control over. You over here oh. tripping off of something that happened in the moment or whatever, and you got stuff going that it might not be on the level as what, you know, whatever happened or tripped or whatever, but what little bit you do have, you screw that up worrying about something. You yeah. some shit that's already gone and you're not getting back and you need to just let it go. So, <laughs> so to you, Pat, we're going to switch up the gears a little bit. Um, I've known you probably since about maybe late nineties, uh, early two thousands. I remember you, you came out on Cali, Cali Com, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I've seen you bigger. I've seen you smaller. But I know that one thing we kind of shared together was uh, 
the road diet. You know what I'm saying? When you're out on the road and, and back in those days, you know, these new artists got it kind of cool because back in those days, we had to go out and do a bunch of shows in a row. You know what I'm saying? In order to do whatever. So that's like late night eating at Denny's or worse, you know, gas station eating, just all this, that, and the third. Um, I remember we was a uh, we were out there for a Halloween and I'm, we went somewhere and got some walk somewhere and got some food from the, the little venue far side to perform and that opio had came out and I, we ran into you some somehow we ran into you i don't know if you were it was in the bay area yeah it was on a halloween it oh was, yeah you talking about that time y'all did the show at the viper room on broadway yeah it was like a little like club bar yeah, yeah. So it was yeah. like a nice it was like a it's like not really a music venue it's more of a club but yeah and then we were chilling on the rooftop Yep. Yep. Yeah, I remember that. Yep. So so from then to now, you look fit, man. <laughs> I don't even remember what, you know, my I, I've allowed myself to like have my weight fluctuate. And I promised myself not to let that happen again. But um yeah, sometimes I don't know what it is, stress, anxiety. Sometimes I just fall in, fall into a, a pattern of of um or over the years i have fallen into patterns of um poor eating habits and just start eating whatever you know it's a, it's funny it's like a slippery slope yeah. you know you're like oh, i have a little some french fries here next thing you know you're eating burgers and french fries every day for every meal you know oh. and, and not drinking water and just doing all the things that help you feel good you're doing all the things that feel good in the moment and you know you then like 30 pounds later, dressed out, you know, not, not sleeping well. And um, just like th this uh, unraveling, this snowball effect happens. And just like the snowball, you get bigger <laughs> with the snowball effect. Man, I, uh, so, I hit yeah. my, I hit my moment. First, I want to shout out uh, Mark Pinkney. You know what I'm saying? He's in the chat right now. He's loyal. <laughs> <laughs> he's loyal to the soil man so he's been uh he's been chiming in with some good ones so you know mark pinkney thanks for uh checking in with us but um you know i kind of hit my plateau on sunday and um i had i had so at one point in covid uh i got up to 273 oh man horrible i got up to 273 and then i just got on my thing and through like protein shake meal replacement and then dealing with justin eat, getting my micro green game on i came down to uh 248 you know what i'm saying right. so now i'm at like 254 255 and on sunday i had a i said i was gonna have my last decadent meal before i kind of just just got back to my thing and it's crazy because uh so how i met justin was I used to go to the uh, farmer's market in Long Beach and um, I'd always pass him and he would seem kind of busy, but he was like a cool dude. You know what I'm saying? We, but we wouldn't interact, but he would, he'd always just be real busy for whatever reason, you know, with the micro greens. So one time I came by and he was like, yo man, I think he had some chives. And he's like, oh man, taste them. They just baby, you know, they're the baby version of the, of the big ones. Cause when I looked at it, me looking at micro greens, I'm thinking, <laughs> I'll eat bean sprouts, but I really don't mess with bean sprouts and whatever he had. My mind was just like, that's probably what it, you know, what it was. So anyway, um, years later, he, I think he was doing a little bit of juicing and he wasn't doing a lot, but a little bit of juicing. So we struck up a conversation. We just started talking, found out we had friends in common and whatever, whatever. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to support him. We've been, you know, saying what's up. We hadn't had a full conversation, but was just saying what's up forever. So I bought some microgreens and um, I'll say with the microgreens and the shake, man, it, it just kind of switched up the whole way that I, like I rearranged the way that I ate. I didn't, I didn't eat so much based on cravings. Cause that's, cause for me, that's where my diet kind of went way haywire. Cause it's like, okay, if you start your day off and you start your day off with starches and sugars, you're going to stay hungry all day. Like you're going to be chasing the high. Like you're going to start off with this, with the fat, with the wood or whatever. So I would just continue to want to eat sweet or salty mm -hmm. or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. So 
Yeah, you're, um, you're, you're, you start to get the messages in your in your brain that's coming from your gut that they, we call cravings. Oh, for sure. And then, and then another thing I switched up, uh, I have like an alkaline water machine at the house. And like I knit, but the thing is, like when falling off with the weight and everything, I would cook. I always cook with alkaline water and I use alkaline, but I wasn't really drinking it like that. But the, but the trip is a lot of the times when you think you're hungry, you're thirsty. You know what I'm saying? And so you have to kind of train your body to like, okay, so you think you're, okay, drink some water and then see how you feel. And then, you know, hop into the double dutch from there. So um, with you, Pep, what made you stop cooking with oil? Um, Because these are the the things um, that cause us to uh, have what, what I call um, what what is called actually insulin resistance. Okay. Oil, sugar, and fat. The combi- in a combination, oil, oil, sugar, salt, and the combination of the three in pretty much every single meal that the average American eats, you know. And usually it's not because of what you added. It's what's already there when you just go to the grocery store. You cop something that's in a package already in a can mm-hmm. or just take a look. 90% of it already is like fully packed with all of the stuff that makes us get sick. And um, at the very least, and I would say this to anybody, at the very least, um, what we can do is not add any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe you're not all the way ready to like not buy anything that has it already added to it like no processed ingredients maybe maybe we're maybe you're not ready for that but at the least you can start with not having that stuff in your house and i think it's probably better to just try your best to not eat things that either have that in it already or that you will add to it and i know for most people that's very extreme so what leads what what basically led me to that is fasting fasting okay. stop eating for a while and then once you do eat again you know it's depending on how long you go once you do eat again your um addiction to sos is what mm-hmm. you know say for sure salt salt oil and sugar is a lot less you can taste and um enjoy food just the food part not the additives just the food you know so I know it sounds crazy, but you can cook vegetables without adding that stuff and it still does have flavor. I think when people say flavor, what they're talking about is salt, oil, and sugar. And I think it takes breaking away from it. And literally when you fast, you do um, allow your uh, insulin levels to, and and your your, your insulin, you allow your insulin levels to get under control. Insulin resistance is much less. So which your cravings are, are much less and you can uh, adjust your day-to-day um, habits. The weight will come off automatically and you can adjust your day-to-day habits to, um, to cater to your long-term health. And that's one, of the re- that, I, that, that's one of the reasons why I strive to become a SOS free. I'm not completely SOS free, but I strive to become SOS free. This is a, it's almost like a, a compass for me about how well I'm taking care of my dietary health is knowing how much of this I'm consuming. How many times am I putting something in my body that was already pre-prepared with SOS? You know, so, you know, that automatically makes you look at the ingredients and it makes you strive to just eat this, to just eat this, you know, (laughs) and not be looking for something in a can in a pack. Something in the bag. You know, our bag, yeah. It, it, it makes you strive to, to go away from that. And I, as, as long as I have that, that compass in my head of I'm trying my best to not eat food with additives, that will guide me. Um, and, and mind you, it's very hard and it's very rare that somebody, because of the way our society is set up around food, it's hard for some, it's, it's, it's rare, it's unlikely that one will come become free of these things but believe me they are like chains they're bondage they're they are uh we're slaves to this shit 
you you know you know when I knew I was I went too far uh last week I ate something up out of a uh 7 eleven <laughs> yes <laughs> and I, I I descended all the way to that my damn self like how am I I know better than this why can't I stop myself from copying something from the hot section at 7 eleven man <laughs> Chicken wings, uh, what are those things? Those um, those uh, mozzarella, those sticks, they're bread sticks, whatever yeah. they call. Yeah, they're 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 wonderfully. It's like um, it's like a, a hug in your mouth, you know. And then when you swallow it, it's all soft and gooey and shit. I, but, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what the dope part is. Is that okay? Even though you're on your mission to not cook with oil and you're 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 SOS conscious. You still human, like man. It like we, we're gonna be human, but the, but you know what? Just because I have a bad meal or a bad whatever, it don't just totally just throw me off. Or I'm yep. like, okay, man. I'm just. It's like you know what, man. You trip, man. Exactly. I'm a little disappointed in you. You know what I'm saying? You could. Exactly. You really didn't even want it. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But, and you jump back up and get right back on the horse and remit. And that's what I'm saying. I use that as a a compass, trying to be SOS conscious. And even if I do stray away, if I keep that light of guidance in my head yeah. it'll 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 help me get back on track Don't. and not be like ah whatever i guess i just ain't doing this no more you know so for you justin um when was the first time that you took a stab at like i'll say like a commercial a commercial horticulturist like where you where you grew something that was bigger than just like a little patch of something like when was the first time when you're like man i'm gonna grow a crop of this and see if i could sell it Oh shit. That's probably microgreens. That's probably like a cool five, six years ago. Okay. Microgreens. Yeah, man. Started off with like 10 trays and then was just like actually it was actually it was less than 10. Um yeah. I mean, you know, I've always been growing stuff, man. So at the end of the day, <clears throat> it was my mom had always just told me, do what you love to do. And whatever I was into, I always always had that kind of mind where I was like, I was able to kind of figure out how to kind of make money doing it. Um, and so I needed space. Microgreens kind of fit that void because I couldn't grow any crops. And then, you know, so, yeah, it was just on. I just made, I did my little crop, seeing if I can get into a farmer's market. Let's go. And that's, that was it. You said you grow it in trays. My parents used to grow uh Wheat grass in trays yep. back in the eighties. Yep. It's the same, same, same thing. Same, it's the okay. same concept. Same concept. Well, to a certain degree, uh, certain it depends. Like certain people will grow wheat grass without any soil, and then certain people will grow them with soil. With the microgreens, you grow with soil, but okay, essentially the same same thing. Yeah, yeah. it's the same kind of concept. You can just okay. kind of put it on. My, my parents used to put it out on the porch. Yeah, they would grow out on the uh, out on our front porch trays yep. of, of wheat grass. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what it. happened to wheatgrass. Wheatgrass used to be a thing. You go to, to the juice spot and get a wheatgrass shot. What happened? You can still, get them. You can still yeah. get them at the farmer's market. They, they still got okay. them. We were selling them for a hot second, man. Yeah, it was doing okay. It. Is it yeah, do you do, do you uh are you an advocate of wheatgrass? I, I don't know if it did it, did it lose its it, it is it not in vogue as a healthy thing anymore? You know it's funny, man. Thing things I always I, I I come I come, I have came to this realization that uh, so I guess as humans always going to have some crazy ass fad and there's always going to be fads, even when it does come to, to vegetables. Right. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, most times with vegetables, the shit is truth. So it just, you know, it never, le it never loses. You might have these cats that may not do it as much anymore, but there's always sectors that always do. Yeah. Every week I get hit for you for wheatgrass i need to start okay. doing more wheatgrass i need to start selling it again man because this shit like people every week man somebody's coming to me for wheatgrass okay. every week. so I, i'll say like with you pep by me knowing the far side you were a gift being able to like not only you know like a certain mc's music but i got to know you kind of like as a friend you know what i'm saying so with justin my one trip Finally stopping and after seeing him for years, striking a conversation, he just uh, he didn't force feed me like a healthier way or a better way. He was just like, well, OK, try this. You know, I got this. And so I kind of got. Like hooked in by not him pushing it on me, but he's like, yo, man, why don't you, you know, why don't you try this? And because I was like, 
microgreens, bean sprout, like sprouted something. I, that that's not the good part. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I want the good part. And uh, but I'll say the best hookup Justin ever gave me was um, and he doesn't do it anymore. And I ask him every time I see him, he gave me these oyster mushrooms, man. Oh. He had like I he, love oyster mushrooms. I, I went to the I went to the farmer's market and I guess uh someone was gonna buy some i don't know if he brought them to the brought them to the office or if he gave them to me there I, I can't remember where but i just remember i had oyster mushrooms for like two weeks man and i and i hit him up every time and he's just like man they're just a lot to grow like you know, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm juggling these microgreens yeah. and these oysters are cool and he was like and then i had a conversation with him last week because i i literally hit him every time because i'm like man and he was just like, well, if I would have started mushrooms first, maybe I would have rocked with the mushrooms, but I got the uh, the microgreens going. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like, you know what I'm saying? That's kind of like where I'm going to be. Yeah. So back on to a little bit of topic. Um, how has the move to L.A. been for you, Pep? Just coming from the Bay, just acclimating to a whole new thing. Um, You know, it's been... Um just my life right now in general has been like very transitional and um you know i have i brought a lot of stuff my I, I lost both of my parents recently my dad in 2016 and my mom in 2019 and you know i was just trying to figure out where i was going to go what i was going to do with myself um we like i said i moved to the bay when i was 13 and I came to the Bay with, with my mom, my dad, and my, my brother. My brother passed away in 2004. So like all of my family members, every single one of them that I came to the Bay area with, to California with, mm -hmm. you know, have all passed on. And um, I just wanted to do something that was intentionally intentional for me in, in the life that I'm trying to live as an artist. Mm -hmm. High Road, a whole crew, everything that we started and established in the Bay is great, but I've outgrown it. You know, I, it's not it's not going to serve. That wasn't not even not going to. It was no longer serving me and what my what what I'm trying to do with my life as an artist, as as you know, I'm all in with with what with this. You, you would probably wouldn't be able to tell because it's been a minute, but it, 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 things are things are going to pick up again. But I moved here during COVID. And like not long after I moved here, they, they really started to make things really strict. Mm -hmm. And I am, um, you know, people, anybody who knows, knows me. And my, my dad was a civil rights activist. And, you know, I just, I, I am a, not an, a, I am an anti-authority person in general. You know, like, I don't like to be told what to do. I definitely don't, I definitely will always resist being uh, coerced into anything, you know. I'm just not the one. I'm not tiptoeing, walking around on eggshells. It's the same exact day that they announced that they uh, lifting the mask mandate. I immediately walked into every store I could with no mask on because that's just my mentality, <laughs> my my attitude. So I wasn't about to rush and go get vaccinated just because they 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 locking shit down on everybody. So I just kind of was like, fuck. And plus, I I came here with a lot of stuff, and I'm still trying to figure out. Cause it's, uh, it's unrealistic, it's, it's um, unsustainable to bring two or three different people's, all of everybody's stuff because they all, you know, I got all of my mom's books, I got all kinds of stuff. My dad had started to get rid of a lot of stuff because his process of passing took a lot longer. So mm -hmm. he kind of knew he, you know, it was a, a process of like 10 years where he just started to purge mm -hmm. before he passed. So it wasn't as much, but still with him and it's all sentimental stuff. So I'm like, what am I going to do with this stuff? And I got the mission of putting together studio and trying to get focused on making music. Mm -hmm. Not so much on, on being, there ain't really much to peruse anyway. I live in a convenient area. I don't have to go very far. I can walk, walk I can walk right around the corner, go to Trader Joe's, walk right around the corner to go to Ralph's. I actually ran into Heinz at Ralph's. Um, so I, I, would, I, I would say that my experience in LA is limited so far. I, I don't think I've really started to live here yet because I haven't gotten to the point to where I'm going to the studio to record and then go and, and um, 
also getting a chance to meet new people and politic and make connections mm-hmm. with people because I'm out in the world. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to do that yet. So okay. I, I can't, I won't, uh, I won't give my, my um, time in LA a score yet because I okay. haven't really started living the way I know that I know that my opio was even telling me, he was like, bro, you moved here when LA ain't even LA right now. He was like, <laughs> you, you, you kind of came at a very inopportune time. So he was like, maybe in a few months, it'll get back to being the L.A., the L.A. that, that he that I, he like that he'd been living in for the last seven years, where it's all kinds of shit popping shit to go do. Oh, people man. Do it just ain't like that right now. So I can't really I can't give my my stay here a score yet. And yeah, plus, man, because I'm... of my own personal uh, situation where I'm I've been transitional for the last three years anyway. Man, I can. Yeah, I can remember. Definitely. Uh motown on mondays they had it down at this little bar not too far from where opio stays and whatnot and i was oh, okay yeah i'd come out and meet him at the bar man we'd have a brew you know what i'm saying listen to some 60 70 soul you know what i'm yeah, saying man, see i ain't got none of that i haven't gotten any of that i can't wait that's over you what was that the, at the goal line no nah, it was at the uh man it wasn't the goal line i can't remember the name of the bar man it was a little teeny yeah, it was a it some was Highland a Park shit though. Yeah, yeah. It's not like too far. From, yeah, no, nah, not that. too far. Mm-mm. I haven't got so, a lot of that yet, so we'll see. I'm trying to link up with with Imani and 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 go to his. I know he got a studio spot. Opio was telling me he got a studio spot somewhere, but you know, like I said, I haven't really stuck my neck out to try to link up with a lot of people because I haven't gotten my situation fully uh, up and up and running yet. But it, it's getting close. It's getting really close. As far as with the studio, we setting up the studio over at OPO's crib, uh, where we'll be able to record, mix, and master. I, I made a little investment into getting the necessary gear uh, to to do the whole process. So I I, I think I'll I'll get a chance to see, really see what my LA life is like once I get to fully working music, uh, working on music, and I got somewhere to go. Like you said, like having an office, having a studio away from home. Then yeah. I'll then I'll be able to really gauge, you know, what my experience is like. And hopefully that'll be starting like in the next couple of weeks or so. Cool. So so for you, Justin, when we had you on the last time, the whole little versus uh situation hadn't really popped off. So I got this question for you, and then we're gonna go to uh the pep. So if you could have a versus dead or alive right now, who would it be? And it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be hip hop, it could be, you know. Jimi Hendrix, Bob Marley, whatever. Who who would you like to yeah, see? You probably just named it right there. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Shit. God damn. Yeah, that's probably uh Bob was probably probably where her head just went. And then you said Jimmy. Shit, man, that'd be that would be amazing, man. Damn. Yeah. I mean, imagine that shit. Something like that would be really cool. Um God damn. I don't know, man. I, I mean, didn't mean to set the bar so high, man. That that's a hard, that's a high ass bar for me, man. Um, I would probably, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I honestly, after saying that, literally, Bob was the one that was going to say. Definitely, Bob mm-hmm. was on that list, and then you just hit, you hit Jimmy, man. That's probably Jimmy. Yeah, man. Them too, man. I, I, yeah. I say, I say, I would, I say, if they did a special, Bob, Jimmy. And Peter Ty. Oh shit! Well, I didn't know I could add a third, man. I thought we were going to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. That's shit, cool. Man, we have all of them up there, then, man. I mean, you know, you know what the the craziest shit I ever seen on Instagram or any of these things, man. And and I wish I was able to to maybe have seen it in real life, man. But it was when um uh Michael Jackson Prince. And James Brown all I got on stage at one. Oh time. yeah. I saw a clip of that. Man, I mean, now imagine like something like that, but they was actually doing their shit, you know? Um, that would be pretty ill. You you know what? I think that part of the way you feel when you see a Michael Jackson or a Prince or a right. James Brown, a lot of that has to do with there was no social media. There was no, like you had to, yeah, like you could dope. hear it yeah, or you could pay to see it. Yeah. Or if you saw it, it was like on a TV show right. in, a, in like a quick snip, like you, you weren't in their world. 
You know right. what I'm saying? Like they were, they were him. You know, there was yeah. the mystique to the whole thing where like now with the internet, like these, a lot of these, you know, I don't want to say younger rappers because some older rappers are into it too. They're like giving you every detail of their life. And so it right. kind of desensitizes the right. whole thing. It's kind of like. It's kind of you, weird, man. You know, being in this slash generation that we are kind of low key, you know, we kind of remember a whole time without everything. So sometimes when I see these cats doing all the, you know, it's kind of like, mm, you know, it's it's cool because, you know, it makes people human. But at the same time, it's kind of like, mm. Cause yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, just that that one, just seeing these cats, these three cats on stage, and then, I mean, let alone figuring, out, like, finding out that that shit actually happened. Yeah. I mean, that's like the type of shit you and your homie sitting around be like, man, imagine this shit, right? And 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 you know, then you were like, what? That shit actually happened? You know, that's you could thing. see Michael Jackson's emotion when he came onto the stage, right. how happy yeah. he was to dance in front of. The, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, man. You could it's, see a grown man right that was excited like a little boy to be on stage, and then for Prince to be right there, just like, okay, like, man, y'all done. You, you took it too far. So for you, Pep, if you could have a versus, it could be a current day versus, it could be an old older artist, a current artist, whatever. What would be your your versus if you could curate one? Um, I think Big Daddy Kane and Rakim would be a good one. I always kind of put those two <laughs> guys in the same kind of category. Um. And, and yeah, as far as rap, I always kind of wanted to see. I, I actually wanted to hear them on a song together. I don't know why it never happened. Wow. But, um, and I think as far as outside of hip hop, I, I would love to see something like. A Sly Stone versus George Clinton or something shit like that. Oh, yeah. Crazy shit. Yeah, that'd be tight. That'd Maybe. be wild. I just started recently listening to Sly Stone. Um, and appreciating his his music, his contribution. Oh yeah, no, nah, he uh, you know, the musicians that he had, like the band, he was dope, but his band, like, oh yeah. man, like yeah. that's you know, that's that's like one of those things. So, um, for you, Justin, how would you say the pandemic has affected your business? Because I, like, I was telling Pep earlier, um, you know, for me. When everything kind of got crazy with COVID and then the grocery stores were all, you know, kind of funny style or just whatever. I was like, well, you know what? I know where I can go and get fresh produce. It's not going to be no crazy line. <laughs> Matter of fact, I heard one dude say one time when I went to the uh, farmer's market right after everything jumped off. Homeboy has said to this, uh, this to this lady, I don't know if she got rude with him or whatever. He was like, I don't go to I don't go to shop at your store, so don't you come and shop at mine. You know what I'm saying? He was kind of like riding on it, like because yeah, it's territorial. But the, the funny thing is, though, <laughs> the it's my store, huh? The uh, no, nah, but the <laughs> farmers market was just like hella crowded, though. Like when everything was kind of like crazy for whatever. So yes. for you, how would you say your business has been impacted by the whole, you know, people being more health conscious or or, or whatnot? Yeah, it was great. I mean, it still is, man. You know, um, finally people, well, I shouldn't even say finally, but just more people are starting to kind of get, you know, starting to take stuff a little bit more serious, you know? And um, so for me, man, it, it was, and still is a, a lot of teaching. I found myself talking a lot more, mm -hmm. um, which is nice, you know, uh, but at the same time, more and more people coming like you can't grow enough man you know there's times where it's just like you get hit hard mm -hmm. you don't have nothing man just like within a matter of i've seen it yeah you <laughs> all, know, your trades, like, all your trades insane. chopped out and if yeah. i don't call you it's not you know, <laughs> sorry man you know I'm what i'm saying man. next next time yeah, yeah you, you know. can hit hard you can hit hard and then you know um but then at the same time it disrupted the market to where it hits hard but not as hard so mm -hmm. you see people still getting like more than a day's worth of something a lot of times you know mm -hmm. where people will actually want to buy five or six you know as opposed to just buying one or two you know you're still seeing a lot of that still pop off 
Yeah, when, when I was at my max, man, I was getting three pounds, man. Yeah, man, you was going in. <laughs> three pounds of what? A micro Microgreens, micro yeah. Greens, man, yeah. Nah, dude, I'm telling you, when I started losing weight and I was on, I was like, this is cheaper than snacks. Yeah. I can have it for lunch. You know what I'm saying? I could have it with some fish. Like, bro, like, dude, I was like, I'm, when I'm on something, dude, I'm on it, man. Whoa. I am on it. Yeah. Yeah, no, nah, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna make sure you, you know, I'm gonna make sure you get some. I don't know if you like them, but I, I, I'm gonna uh, get you some of Justin's product and let yeah, you, you know. Yeah. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah I mean, thought you I, doing some oil. And I know, I know that you can use microgreens as a as a um, a garnish, I, which I do. You can even see right here. I'll just show you. This is this is me. This is how I eat all the time. So I'd be having this shit just laying around because I always chop something up. All right, on, yeah. Sprinkle oh, it okay. on top of my food. I either I always. It's something green and some onions. I put onions on everything, pretty mm. much, and always either some cilantro or some. I had some microgreens one time. I always try to have something when I cook. I always try to be. I try to sprinkle something fresh on top. I think microgreens would work uh, well. Like I eat, make chili or whatever, right, right. and I always put something green, put some onions on top. It's you know, I started um, when I was when I was getting like, like the three pounds. I would just take a handful and put it in my morning protein shake. You know what I'm saying? I like, it's something about blended up live greens or very fresh greens. Like uh, I'm not a coffee drinker, but it gets me up in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Like oh, yeah. I can, it's something I can feel. I'm not gonna say I can feel the energy, but it's just something that kind of gets me up. And I like yeah. that. I like that feeling. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, all food can give you a certain level of stimulation for sure. Food is a stimulant more so than like i think i read this they like you actually get your energy from uh the oxygen and sunlight yep. and food is a stimulant for the most part so you should get a little bit of a stimulation whenever you eat something if you eat something and you get drowsy that's like you're eating the wrong thing or you are experiencing a, a symptom of insulin resistance should, <laughs> blood sugar fluctuations that can't that that don't aren't able to maintain a certain level of stasis. Okay, so this conversation is starting to take the kind of turns that uh the conversations take when I'm talking to Justin, and then we we're talking for longer than five minutes, and he gets a little too deep, and then I'm like, <laughs> man. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, like, I'm like, man, what you're saying is so true, but oh man, this is for me. Like, man, you short circuit <laughs> my breaker. We had a conversation last week and he was talking about uh uh some 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 stuff that he he used to buy from a grocery store, but his experience that changed up everything. And what he said, it made every like all the sense that something could make it made it, but it was still too much for me to hear beyond. You know, I was like, hey, man, we got to give PG-13, man. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, took it to the max. But no, nah, that's dope. So back to some hip hop. Pep, your top three MCs. Oh, wow. I'm like the worst person to ask this question, but I'll, I'll try to do it. And then I got to get out of here because I got I got nothing. No, it's all good. But um, top three MCs. I mean, I'll tell you who influenced me the most. Um, who influenced me the most would be Run DMC, but that's two. There's two MCs in Run DMC. Um, gosh, it, it, I would have to say Run DMC and Big Daddy Kane. That's three right. MCs. Yeah. All right, that's cool. So I'm gonna end it out with you, Justin. You uh. You at the farmers markets? You doing at least two of them a week? You you interacting with a lot of people coming through, coming through. Where do you see social interaction going in the next two years? Social interaction going in the next two years? Damn! Woo! You, you told me not to get deep, baby. Um, <laughs> woo! The quick version, the PG, the P, the G rated, the G rated version. You know what I mean? I, it, in all honesty. I am in great hopes that uh, social interaction can remain 
or can actually get better um, than what you know than what it was even in the in the beginning of the whole pandemic. You know what I mean? Um, I'm hoping that we can actually be get, be able to actually uh, just take a lot more time to actually take time and, and start building with one another, man, on all all kind of just different fronts, man, and and just really start sharing space man you know what i mean that's what that that's my hope okay uh, within the next two years man i mean yeah uh, now i'm starting to see it you know i'm starting to see a little bit better man a little bit of cohesiveness it, that whole pandemic shit man was weird man when you was just sitting out there watching it you know unfold you know it was yeah. it was weird like how you just saying you know about everything at the market man cats being like yo this is but, mine and but this is mine. <laughs> You really see cats like they animalistic, like, man. Animalistic. You know, that that you animal know, part. Uh, that tribalism just came out, man. And seeing these things throughout just man, even when I'm on the freeway, even more now, you know what I'm saying? Seeing these things, you know, because we're hiding behind all this shit, you know. And it, I, I don't know, man. Without trying to get too heavy, man. I'm just hoping that we can um Progress. Utilize this time to actually speak more of peace to one another, man, as opposed to really anything else, man, to, you know, make sure. Nah, that's good. that's dope. Well, I want to thank you, Pep, for, uh, you know what I'm saying, giving me the time. Uh, definitely, oh, yeah, I'm going gonna, gonna to do my research on some SOS. You know what I'm Please saying? Please do. Please do. There's a lot out there. And then for you, yeah. Justin, I'll say, man, I'm not going to say one of your greatest investments, but you hooking me up with them free little micro green, that little sandwich. Ah, <laughs> going a long way, man. I'm, 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 I'm rock, I've been rocking with you ever since, man. I appreciate you, man. That's Where's the farmer's market man. at? So I can come check it out. Where's so, that? Oh, man, we, we Long Beach, Long Beach on, on Sundays. Saturday, we're in Cerritos, uh, the, right by the Performing Arts Center. And then we're also in Riverside on Saturdays as well. And that's in downtown Riverside. Yeah, that's too far. We, that's we, too far. We'll we'll link up in some kind of way, Pep, and I'll and I'll, I'll come and scoop you or something. Okay. We'll go and, be, yeah, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll go and check one of them out. So you got anything you want to promote right now, Pep? Anything you want people to go out and check? See? Um, no, I don't. Not right now, honestly. <laughs> I, <laughs> I got an album that I'm that I'm. I, I don't like to make announcements that you know that that aren't really you know imminent, yeah. and I don't have a, a actual plan. But I do have an album that I had to, to actually put on the shelf because everything was going on with this COVID shit. I was shuffling around in different places, but I have an album that I said, I pretty much almost finished, started working on um, with this, uh, what is called the Zoo Labs Music Entrepreneurship Accelerator Program. This was like a, um, it was a cohort. They do it every year, but there was a cohort of artists and people who are um, linked in in the Bay with, with like, uh, the kind of community arts um, networks. And they, they uh, basically it's a workshop, but it was virtual, it was on Zoom. So because of COVID it just started, but it was a workshop where they gave you access to their studio, the, the zoo, zoo labs in, in Oakland. And I was able to use the big studio, record on an SFL board and all that um, in, in, uh, in their facility. And the album was almost, was pretty much um, was pretty much done. I just didn't get a chance to mix and, and, and master it before I, I uh, started working on my plans to move and everything. And um, once we get the studio set up, we will we will get back to work and get finishing. And you know, you will hear the announcements for for something that's more concrete um, soon. Soon come. Okay. So where can they find you on Instagram? Pep Lava on Instagram. But um, you will you will find me on. IGTV. I don't even post on Instagram anymore. I post videos and videos only. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've seen them. I've watched. I've watched them. <laughs> you get your scroll on. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Yeah. You try, and, uh, Justin, you got us. So if people want to come and check out your micro greens, they can check you out at Cerritos on uh, Saturdays, Long Beach, Sunday. Uh, yep. Exactly. Uh, Riverside, Riverside Cerritos on Saturday. And then uh, we got Long Beach on Sunday. And then, of course, man, if they ever in the IE, man, you come through the farm, man. Come check us out over here, man. Shit, see Tell them where they can find you. Yeah, the the social media tag. Oh, social media, man. Uh, the Seeds of Xanadu, 
X A uh the seeds all one word like a what's one man say the pimp name slip back all one word uh, <laughs> uh the seeds of and it's X A N X A D U um and that's on Instagram pretty much anyway and and YouTube too got a lot of YouTube videos up man so Yo, yeah. well. I want to thank you guys. I want to also thank uh, Claudia Sanchez, you know what I'm saying, for uh, checking us out, and also uh, Mark Pinkney, you know what I'm saying, our, our, our faithful chatters. So, nah, brothers, thank you for your time. It was a great conversation. I'm going to hit you up, Pep, and then I'll check you out you this just, weekend. Just yep. All right, no doubt. All right, All right man.